Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Extreme Memory. My name is Chris Floss. I'm your host, sitting next to Larry Rivera. And Rivera, you got to admit, the guest on this show, I don't know what to expect on this episode. Chico, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I've been all, all over the world. You've been sitting in the same place. I've been over there. I've been over here. Chico, what's the matter with you? This is a beautiful thing. I have to give you credit, Chico. Chris Claus bringing the XPW back to the people, Chico, after 20 years, Chico, 20 years. And Rivera, back, I got you. Back to the people, brother. Thank you, Rivera. And the fans, thank you as well. But Rivera, hey, it's been a long time, pal. I haven't seen you in almost 20 years. <laughs> Chico, I'm watching right now the Steelers and Cleveland Browns. Oh, Chico, you know, multi, multi it's, it's the, 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 the Steeler kick, you know, Chico. I don't know what the, the Rothley's burger lo losing the. You're, what's what going you, on, Chico? What are you, what are you to talk? What do you do? What do you do? What, what Chico? Come what? on. Hey, you, refer, you know, that hey. reminds me, Chico. I got to ask you, I remember that sometimes you would be maybe up in the clouds and the stars being Cosmo Larry. Do you have a prediction for my bookie on one of these games? More than one time. More than one time. But let, oh. me, let me tell you, Chico. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, Chico. Triple crown. Triple crown. Los Angeles. Doyer. Laker. Triple crown. Okay, thank you very much, Rivera. Hey, Carmine? Yeah, yeah. What are you you taking bets right now? Put me down for the Rams, pal. Carmine, I'll pay you back later for the other bet. Thank you. Rivera, thank you very much. I just got off the phone. Uh, but, hey, that was awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest right now is the one and only Larry Pat Howard Rivera. Call him thank what you want. I thank always you, call him Rivera. And this is a very special episode for, for us at Extreme Memories. Salud. Thank you. You too, my friend. Hey, I got you right here. We got the moonshine. <laughs> we got the moonshine going. No, just kidding. It's water. But hey, thank you for joining us, Larry Rivera. And uh, beautiful, beautiful yeah, man, great seeing you again. We got all the old classic stuff to talk about. And um, you and I, we... We have a lot of history together, my friend, and we, we've been down a long road together, and uh, it's really cool having you on in this fashion because doing Extreme Memories, which, by the way, folks, the Wrestling Chatter channel right here exclusively, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and share this video, and uh, we're going to be doing We always do new episodes on the 15th and 30th of the month, so new episodes, and this is another exclusive right here. But doing these episodes, Rivera, and to the fans, uh, it's it's a lot of fun because, of course, in pro wrestling, we're we're our character, right? Whether we're an announcer, a referee, anything. And I've been I've been talking candidly, but this episode more special than most because myself, my co-host for life, right here, Larry Rivera. Um, whenever we're on screen together, we are always on. We're never talking candidly. So this, folks, is a first between Chris Kloss and Leia Rivera to be talking as if the camera was turned off like we would all the time when they weren't filming us. So, Larry, great to have you on. And this this interview is going to be a lot of fun, my friend. Thanks for thank, joining us. Thank, thank, thank you, brother. It's a, uh, a, a great pleasure, man. Thank you. I know you've been doing this for a while. I don't know how many episodes – we're like 10 or 15, somewhere in there. So it's, yeah. it's a great thing. I mean, you, you you were the one that came up with this idea, and it's 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 awesome. And uh, uh, I'm more than happy to do it, man. And and you know, I just want to say, you know, just talking about what you were saying earlier, man. Pro wrestling, man. It's 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 the greatest theater, man. It's <laughs> it's it's. Uh, you know, I, I first started watching it in, in 1971, 1972, little kid, man, on wow. TV. And it just grabbed me, man. And it, it, it was, you know, 
this it, it is the greatest theater. It's totally changed, you know, and 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 you've got a lot of critics now, you know, people talk about like uh, you listen to the Jim Cornette uh, drive through and, right. and you know, there's a lot of a lot of criticism, man, but still, you know, let's let's give it up for this great industry, this great business, man. Even though I I I I didn't pay my dues. I am so grateful for the fact that I got to be a part of of this, yeah. of this, of this whole thing, man. And like I'm saying, a little kid watching TV, Channel 13, Jeff Walton, Gene LaBelle, John Tolis, Fred Blassie, uh, 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 Chavo Guerrero, Victor Rivera, my inspiration for the character, Vic, the great Victor Rivera, who is who, who people say he may have passed away. Who knows? He may <laughs> still be alive. Yeah. And it's it's like this, this thank you, thank you, God, for this business, for this great, for this great industry. And uh thank you, Chris Kloss. Thank, you. thank you, my friend Larry yeah. Pat Howard. Um yeah. Um, so well, that kind of answered my first question. And dude, I couldn't concur with you more, man. Like when all when when all else is wrong in the world, pro wrestling is always a salvation, man. It's, it's, always a, it's beautiful, and that they you know locked up ten hours, twelve hours. I'm 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 paranoid, man. I'm I'm almost sixty years old. So when I go outside, I'm I'm you know I, I I've got a shield on, man. So most of the time, I'm sitting in the pad watching the network, watching. Uh, Mid Atlantic, watching uh, the, the 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 great Mid South, Bill Watts, all of that stuff, which right. is, and it's it's keeping me sane. That and 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 making music, you know, with the uh, with the with the, with the home studio. That's it, and the wife. That's that's that's. Without that, I'd be uh, jumping off a cliff, man. How long you been married now, man? Three years. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then that was in December is three years. Congratulations, so, bro. Was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Never Thank thought you. never thought I would see the day where El Chico Dandy Rivera <laughs> settled down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so does your does your wife, does she meet the Larry Rivera criteria uh, that match the women that you grew up with? Does she know how to cook arroz con pollo? Uh, unfortunately, I am the one that handles the action in the cocina, brother, because I'm not going to trust any kind of Cuban cooking, Chico. Yeah. If they don't know, I'm going to handle the business, Chico. Frijoles negro, plátano frito, yuca con ajo, Chico. Olvídate. If you don't know how to do it, get out of here, Chico. I'm taking care, I'm taking care of the business. Oh, hey, what are you, you can't take the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Is that that's, what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Get out. Because uh, I, know, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. That my was father. Good. My father told me you cook the arroz con pollo with the Miller High Life, a bottle of Miller High Life beer. The cerveza in the in the the in the, the, con, in the, in the, in the pot, chico. That's See, how you do it. This is the type of stuff like when you would talk like that on commentary right now, I'm the freedom to laugh and to react to it. But man, there is, there is a lot of times where we would be sitting in the booth. You, we, sometimes we call the shows live, but most of them were in the edit bay and, and we would, uh, you would say stuff like that. I would say stuff like that. And we had the luxury of like doing a silent laugh with our face, but then calling the action seriously in the booth. So, there was a lot of that, man. And uh, no, and let me, you know, I, I, sorry to cut you off, brother, but I was thinking about this the other day, and and like I'm to going back to watching the network and Bob Cottle on that Mid Atlantic. I wish, man, I wish we had the opportunity to do live commentary on those shows, especially like at the Olympic. Yeah when there was shows at the Olympic and the sports arena, we could have totally set up ringside and done some kind of live commentary. And if the, if need be, we could have come back and, and sweetened it up. Yeah. But I guess I'm, I'm, I'm revealing a secret here. Most of the, most of the commentary we did for those shows was done in the studio. Of course. So, and, you know, and, and, and kudos to Johnny Webb. 
Yeah, yeah. John and Webb. Yeah, when uh, when he left, and I know he left after you had left, but I remember when he left, man, it was like I knew right away, like, well, that's it. This there goes the TV product, there goes the company. Like that was one of the uh where the writing was on the wall, that was like the first sentence written on that wall. And it was like, damn, you know, he was, he was, he was good at what he did. He could be opinionated and he could. Oh, dude, he, 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 he and he chipped in with lines. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember he fed, he, uh, he fed me a couple lines. It was like, Oh, this is great. All right. I'm going to go with this. And that would lead yeah. to something else. Right. You know? So and it was just, great. Yeah. And he just knew. He was a good editor, but he had a pro wrestling mind to add to that. Because right. I've worked with a ton of editors, especially when I was working at MTV. Great guys, professional as all can be. And you just can tell they didn't know wrestling. And it, and it, it made a difference. And I actually, I don't even know if I told Webb this, but I remember like trying to put a good word in for him. He probably didn't believe that I that I did that, but I really did. I tried to put a good word in, and I'm sure Kevin did too, was to get Webb in as one of the editors for Wrestling Society X on MTV because, because it was just the wrestling knowledge that you needed. That, it goes, it's like you know when to cut. An editor knows when to cut. A wrestler knows when to cut. <laughs> You know, and and yeah, it's it's uh, uh, that's why uh, you know Florida Championship Wrestling. You had uh, Gordon Soley's son working as the uh, director, and uh, true, it's it's all about it's all about no. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's about knowledge. You have uh, if you just bring in a, a TV guy who doesn't know that the, the, have any knowledge of the sport or the, any aspect of how things work. You're, you're taking your life, taking your life in your hands. Chico. Hey man, Rivera, whenever you go into your character, dude, I, I will <laughs> make it right now, dude. Cause when we were working, we had a lot of fun and, but it was work. Right. And we were going into the office and we had to deal with politics. Some somewhat staying late. So, uh, uh, as oh, man. Dude, do you remember we'd get there at what? 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, leaving at two thirty-three in the morning. If we were, <laughs> dude, I remember mornings where I was literally, by the time I got on the freeway, heading home, heading West, it was sun like, up. Dude, the sun was, I see the sun behind <laughs> me coming up. And it was like, that was our Wednesday nights, dude. You know, mm. right. Yeah. Wednesday night, stream office. Um, but I will tell you, bro, like we were, I was so caught up in, in the work, uh, the politics, you know, and, and dealing with what was going on yet we were having fun. And I was also concerned, like I, I wanted to do a good job, right? I wanted to of course, come across knowledgeable and also play with my character as Chris Floss, the wrestling announcer. Right. So I was wrapped up and then, going back and forth with you was always fun. But now that I can kind of take a step back, take a deep breath, relax and watch it. I am an, I'm a fucking big fan of, of you dude. And, and you're, you're the, the, all the, con I already lived it, but, but like, I appreciate it more now, dude, like hearing your ass on commentary, dude. I'm not kidding. You. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks, thanks dude. I was thanks. Doing that. So you're welcome, dude. Yeah. I was doing that with you. But like I said, I, I realized when I looked back and I was like appreciating more, I just it just hit me like, well, you know, I was I was worried about my own concern about my own craft and focused on that. Yeah, and Absolutely. The and, 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 and there's no 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 you know uh, fault with that. No. You gotta I was, do your I thing. Always, I was always yeah. a fan, but I just like I'm like even a bigger the the more time goes by the bigger a fan I get of, of your stuff. And, and it was just, it's just so great, man. Like somebody brought up to me, uh, go funk yourself when, um, when <laughs> Terry Funk, Terry at the LA sports arena, Terry Funk clobbered me. Uh, that was just an honor in itself. Right. Oh, I, I took off. I, uh, I took off. <laughs> But when on the commentary, it was like, Chico, the Chris class, he's, He's back. You, you, you should be in the emergency ward right now. <laughs> and I'm like, 
I'm like, Rivera, I got the ice pack on the head. The heating pad is on the leg. And Chico, what is this? Give that back to me, Rivera. And, and, and you know, it's just and somebody, somebody just recently like quoted that whole thing. And like, they remember all that, dude. Just I have the, I have the honor of seeing Terry Funk as world champion defending against Chavo Guerrero at the Olympic Auditorium. This would have been 1976, I believe. So when, it was, uh, when a young Rivera was sitting there at the Olympics, did you ever think at that moment in time that you would be working with Terry Funk? Never in a million years. Yeah. And I took a, and and I actually met him at the Cauliflower Alley Club when when the reunions were over there at the uh, Sportsman's Lodge. In studio, in studio City, I, and I, uh, yeah. on the same night, on the same night, I took a photo with Terry Funk and Luthez. So you know, two world champions, NWA world champions, and uh, I still have them here. I'm gonna have to post them now. Wow, uh, that's great, brother. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. And and I, yeah. I'm the same way, dude. I I never in a million years dreamt that I would be working with these guys too. So Rivera, you, you talk, you know, like you kind of explained my first question, like how you got into pro wrestling. You were watching these guys, and you went to the events, and it and it just you it, it uh, you you gravitated to it, right? It catapulted you in. Same with me. Um, let's fast forward now. You are um, you're basically doing your thing. You're you're living in L.A. like I am, and. Uh, you now become a part of XPW. You weren't there right in the beginning, but you pretty much were there in the infancy of XPW, the early days. And you were there along with myself, the both of us, from the beginning of XPW TV. So, so talk talk a little bit about how how you got started in XPW, how you got involved, how you got in, how did you know about XPW on your own before you got in, and who brought you in? Because I think, if I remember, it had it was a connection through Josh Lazy, correct? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So you know, as as we mentioned, I, I've been a wrestling fan since a little kid. So up and to the, the whole time, I mean, the L.A. wrestling scene basically during the territory territory days died in 1982, right. and uh, after that, you know, you'd have the the, the lucha shows you know, just have occasional stuff popping up in California. And uh, I stayed a wrestling fan. You know, I stayed a wrestling fan. I I, I subscribed to the uh, Wrestling Observer like so many other people did. So I kept on top of the scene. And uh, whenever there was an indie show in, in, in L.A. or anywhere, you know, within a 50-mile radius of the L.A. area, mm -hmm. I was on it. I would jump on it and check out the show. So, yeah, after a while, I'd, I'd hear about XPW. I heard about, you know, Slammers. Mm -hmm. I heard about uh, S, uh, Southern California Championship Wrestling, although I didn't go to any of those shows. Yeah. But I remember uh, XPW and seeing the, the ads for the, the gigs at the, the shows at the Palace. Right. Okay. At the palace in Hollywood. <clears throat> and, uh, I, I knew lazy through, you know, the whole, you know, I'm, I, I'm a musician and yeah. And uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that's how those I know lazy. Know, for those that don't know XPW was not the only spotlight that Larry Rivera was under. Uh, you were, <laughs> people knew you from Brujaria and, 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 all, and the, all kinds of, all kinds of other bands and stuff. And, and, uh, I knew Lazy from, you know, he's the bass player in Danzig. And uh, I would start seeing Lazy at the at the comic conventions down at the Shrine Auditorium. Okay, right. And I would see him and, and say, hey, what's up, man? And, and he says, yeah, I'm working with this guy, Rob Black. And, uh, we're gonna, you know, we've got this re new wrestling group going, XPW. It's 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 going to be the shit, you know. And, and, and uh you know, hey, just just want to let you know about that, and, and and so he kept talking about it, and 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 I had done the, I had brought up the Larry Rivera character earlier, like at indie shows through L.A. and especially with the 
Johnny Legends. Okay, okay. In, incredibly strange wrestling. That's right. where it, it kind of, you know, kind of started developing. So I said, yeah, I've got this character that may work with with this XPW thing. Let me let me give it a shot. So uh, I think I he gave me a, a a tape, you know, one of those early one of the early tapes, hardcore from, from, or maybe from the country. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, from the country club. Probably, probably hardcore conception, the first uh, home video. Right, and and so I I took that and did the whole you know amateur home recording and just dubbed my voice over it. Oh, doing okay. doing the doing the Rivera thing, and and he so called me back. It. So you turned Chris Kloss down yeah. to do that, huh? Jake. Rivera. Come on, <laughs> so I, I, you know, I sent I sent him the tape back, and and uh, he called me back and and was like, "Dude, come on in, you know, we, you know, come come into a a, a me it was it was a meeting, yeah. The first thing he said, come in, and, yeah, come in, come into the to the office, and it's a, a it was a whole. I remember it was a meeting with everybody." Right. And I remember I remember the, the, the face I remember was Damien Steele, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh it was this meeting and and I was like kind of you know shitting my pants because it was like, okay, you gotta introduce yourself. I was like, all right. And I just try to get myself over as like this old school guy. Yeah. Or just that like the old school fan, you know, who was yeah. who was kind of familiar with what was happening, you know. I remember. 30, 30 or 25 years ago at that point and and you know I'll I'll do what I can do to you know make this make this company what it is and and I remember at the time it was controversy even then because it was you know trying to be the the ECW knockoff right right so so but I you know like like I'm saying like or I said earlier in the show I'm so grateful for yeah. just the oppor just the opportunity you know the, the oh. opportunity that the fact that somebody said, "Hey, man, come on in, and you can be." And then we were on TV, dude. We were on on America One yeah. uh, Network for who knows for a limited time, but at least we were on. And yeah. you know, so it's 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 uh, yeah, that's how I got in. Basically, the, the, so, if, it, so if it wasn't for lazy, you know, so I don't. Who knows okay. where he is, man? That guy travels the world. He's like exotic. Shark fishing in Thailand, Chico. Who knows where he is? But uh, thank you, thank you, Lazy. That's great, yeah. man. So, yeah. so now you guys were friends through music, and now when you said Lazy approached you about XPW, how close of friends were you? And did he know, like, oh, Pat, Larry uh, is is a wrestling guy? Did does late was Lazy familiar with you enough? to know that you were a wrestling fan or did he just like ask you about it? Not knowing, well, you know, like I said, we, we, he, he was a regular at that. Um, oh, right. The, right. the, the convention. And yeah. I, and, and I was with Hollywood book and poster with okay. Eric Caden, the great late Eric Caden, the great late, late, great Eric Caden, I should say. And, and I would have my little, corner of the table i'd sell wrestling tapes okay so right. I had my, right now, I, yeah. yeah so i had my you know like mid-south and you know all japan new japan you know the yeah, little, you gave me, you gave little me tv th playing the stuff so he would come it wasn't just once a month you know i mean yeah. it would be a few you know i'd see him regularly hey what's okay. going on so he knew i was a wrestling fan he knew i knew my stuff gotcha and and so and I had no idea that he was, I, you know, I'm no, he's the bass player in dancing. Right. That's, you know, so, you know, he eventually said, hey, what do you think? XPW, yeah. chick. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, I remember meeting you that day. I remember the first time I saw you and I can't remember who ribbed me, but somebody ribbed me, whether it was Kevin or Rob, and they, they took me aside like, Dude, Klaus, um, you're done. You're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, <laughs> yeah, they wanted to fuck with me, and then, and then I just remember, like, I looked at you, like, 
the fuck is this guy? What the? <laughs> so like, 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 I remember thinking I was like, like, fuck this guy, dude. Like, and I'm like, getting pissed off, and like, like they quickly squashed it. They're like, dude, 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 no, no, no. This is your Bobby Hina Gorilla Monsoon, man. This is the your guy. So I remember the first, like, they told me that, and I, that was when I first saw you. I was like, what the fuck, you know? But then, like, quickly after that, we started talking and just right off the bat, we're like, oh, dude, this is going to be awesome because we we started to talk wrestling. We we understood that the other understood it, the comedy aspect of wrestling, and like, oh, this is going to be fun and and uh, and all that, and it was. And, uh, and I remember, like, um, you did. You were talking to me, like, um, the way you you said to how you were kind of selling yourself, like I remember you like right away bringing up all this old school stuff, and then I like countered. I'm a little younger, but I countered with like stuff in the '80s and all that. And I just remember that like, oh, cool, like the, we we both know and get and appreciate uh, wrestling and the psychology and the history. You you got more history than I do for sure, but but uh, of the stuff we know. I felt like we were both kind of like in our own way encyclopedias about this business and loved it. And, and that's, and that translated into us doing our shtick. So, so now Rivera, you're in there uh, and you come in, like we, we already did our debut shows in Reseda in 1999. Now we started television in April of 2000. Is that when you you came into that office, your first meeting would have been in the year 2000? Yes. Like shortly before. Yes. Okay. Right, like, Mar like March, late March. Right. Because yeah. yeah. quickly after that was when we started filming XPW TV. Right. Yeah. And we so we would do the stuff on the green screen and the, the wraparound. Screen. Yeah. yeah. Right, the wraparounds, and then they made a set for us, which was actually shout out to another great guy, a bit of a SoCal legend himself, which is Tool Gary Key. Um, oh, the Tool, that's yeah, right. Tool, the very, the very mysterious Tool. tool, tool. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he he was that guy was like a bona fide carpenter, and and so he built all that stuff. If you remember, he right, yeah, he built all that. And uh, we didn't see him too much in the office, only saw him like during shows or when he would train with D and Damien Steele. Uh, one of the sweetest, nicest guys in the business though, if you got to know him, very soft spoken, but just a great guy, you know? Uh, but yeah, he built our TV studio where it was yourself and me. We had the TV monitor behind us, very reminiscent of primetime wrestling with Bobby Heenan, Gorilla Monsoon. But, but it was like, we we started to really not right away because we were green, you know, and and then I think everything flowed once you and I got comfortable with each other, and when we kind of felt like how we're gonna stick sh this and bounce off of each other, because you were the heel, I was the face. You you applauded the heels, and I the how could you Rivera, you know, all that stuff. And, and, and then, and then you know, yeah, the, 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 I, I'm sorry to cut you off there, but the one thing it's, it's like, even though I, I took the heel, the, the heel way, I still was not down with the, the with the violent crap. Violent crap. Yeah. <laughs> because I was trying to emphasize that old school, you right. know, like, right. You know, catch as catch can Greco Roman. <laughs> Chico, Stanislav, Stanislav Sibisco. Yeah, I oh, remember one so time you you like you didn't really do it, but we were on the commentary in the booth and and like Chico, why did they have to use the, the garbage can, Chico? <laughs> in the in the, the light tube. This is for the you put it out on the curb once a week, the trash man is coming. <laughs> this is what it's made for and the light bulb is and when it's dark, you turn the light on, Chico. And then and then, uh, and then you're like, all you need right there. Instead of this, you put one half Nelson on like the catches can, and then like you would say, "See here, this is how you do it." Please, like, get your hands off of me, Rivera. And then we weren't doing anything, but we were just talking, no. and that's yeah. all you had to say. You yeah. just had to say, "How does this feel?" And I would just, I would go off like, "Oh, would you get your hands off of me, Rivera? Stop it! We're calling the action," and and it was just too much fun, dude. 
It was, it was, it was just Good great. Times. And I remember those nights too, man. If you remember, one of us would have the laughing bug, and <laughs> and, and dude, we could not get through some of that because I would start laughing or you would start laughing, and I just remember one night where like. This is when we were uh, standing in front of the big X at the, the second office. And it was to the point where, like, neither one of us could even make eye contact doing, <laughs> doing our doing our wraparounds because it would be like we would just bust up to the point where, like, Rob and Kevin would get pissed at that. But then we got to the point where, like, they were starting to laugh, too. And it was just like – it was just great, man. It was, it was the best. Dude. Oh, man. Remember that one uh, where we did when we did it outside. We did the the, the and it was and the plane came. Hey, right, Chico, man, <laughs> the rubber black flying, making yeah. sure, making sure we are got everything right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and, and who would have thought that your tagline would mean so much more nowadays? When you would call him the Donald Trump. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you watched that on, those, we on, those, on, those, on, those, on that DVD. Right. Yeah, yeah. The Donald Trump on the wrestling basement. Yeah, man. yeah. What the hell is going on, dude? Oh, this man. guy is Chico. Chico. We're crazy. Oh, crazy only, time. Only if Klaus and Rivera could do commentary on how the world is, right? That would be a that would be a, another project, right? Fox News, Chico. Yeah, I know, man. Klaus and Rivera. Oh my gosh! But and, yeah, and, like, and along with Geraldo. <laughs> there you go, dude. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so like, it's funny when you look back at like our our stuff, and and you hear you, your tagline with like the Donald Trump, and it's like. It, it kind of like perks people up now when they watch that because you say the name Donald Trump. It's controversial. Never in a million years, it's coming coming back to haunt me, dude. Just coming the fact back that, to haunt me. Just oh. the fact that he became president. Like so, when you watch that now, it's like, oh wow! Like we, we just <laughs> never would have thought that, right? But but um, no, great times, Rivera, and um, and that was that was before The Apprentice. Mind you. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, of so, course, Donald Trump's always been in the spotlight, right, before all that. But right. it means right. so much more now when you watch those old shows. And it, uh, you actually, uh, because of that, it, it puts Rob Black another notch higher because <laughs> compared to a president, right? So, uh, but, but either way, Rivera, uh, no, just the best, dude. We'll get into the, some of that, too, because there's some great stories with, uh, with just um, – Great experience, man. Like working in the in the position that we did, getting to work with each other, and and it was so much fun when we were able to gel. Um, we, I mean, we did have moments where it was like we disagreed, or okay, you, you got to let me talk a little bit, let me talk, you know. And and but but overall, dude, it was such a joy, dude, and it was such. It was just so much fun, dude, because we were calling a wrestling match, but we were like in the middle of doing our shtick at the same time, you know. And and it was it was just um, look, you know, I, I, yeah. And I and I hear you, man. And and going back to uh, what I was saying earlier, I just wish we had more of an opportunity to do it live because I know, I know, we would have totally come up you know that's a totally different environment it's it's much more charged yeah you know the air is charged man so right we and everything we every, they, everything they, feels just that much more important at the time and so and, we and i know that would have made us you know yeah. up the game and so yeah. i i'm just i i just imagine what what could have been if we would have been able couple. to do some live, we did, we did a we did a few like we did a couple live ones, but but most all of them were in studio. But we did um, we did a couple of them that were live, and I want to say we did do a few um, XPW Internet XPW. Remember that with Tony T? Oh and, yes, yeah, uh, and he yeah. And so we did yes. do that. Yes. But, yeah, but it was, but it was, um, it that just was at the, uh, at the Olympic, right? Right. And, and, yeah. 
you know, it's funny because after you left, when it was Wantastico, your favorite, but uh, when it was, uh, when it was, uh, yeah, 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 I know, man. Well, we got to bring up the good, bad, and the ugly here. But I personally, I, I, I was, I was, Gabriel was a nice guy, right? It was just the wrong place, the gimmick, right? But, um, because it could have been handed to anybody, but, um, but he and I actually did a lot of those later shows at Pico Rivera and, and uh, at the Olympic, uh, live. So we did, we, we did most of them still in studio, but we did a lot of those live. So I think they were just fooling around with different uh, production uh, techniques and all that. Unfortunately, we, we didn't do, you and I didn't do too many of those, but, um, but no, I agree with you, man. And you know what? I, I really appreciate this and I'll, and I'll thank them for you as well, Larry, is whenever I do talk to fans, they do like talk very fondly, dude, about the way we bantered and worked together in the matches. They, and they found it so entertaining, dude. So I really, I mean, I have my detractors, people that weren't fans and all that, but the ones that are, dude, it, and that's fine if you're not, I do not care, dude. But, wow. but if you are, if you, the ones that appreciate it, you could totally tell like they were thoroughly entertained, uh, which is an honor to me uh, that someone would think that. And I'm really grateful. Uh, of our of our stuff, our shtick, our comedy uh, during during those matches, dude, which I loved and I appreciated, and and I'm so glad too that you and I really got the green light to be ourselves in those moments. Absolutely, we Absolutely. were yeah, we were working for a company. People could say like, well, it wasn't WWE and all that, but you know, I've I've I'm friends with Joey Styles, and and I know a lot of guys that have gone through there, and they would say like, we're just you guys are doing being yourselves. We were totally restricted. You guys have the freedom of an indie league, yet you're showcased on television and, and home videos worldwide. So, so you're right, dude. It was a, a really um, – we were very fortunate to have had that. Well, you know, and, and, and uh, the thing about those days was that the feedback channel yeah. was, was very limited, right? It was basically – limited to what the socal uncensored oh. right uh, uh, dot com and they had a like a little uh, xpw section yeah. that was that was it that was it for the feedback yeah. and and you know half the half the people would be like who's this rivera schlub can't even understand what the hell's going on and <laughs> you know i can't remember what the dude was he was like a mask guy he was You're a right. mask dude and that guy like would just go off, just mm. just just like ad infinitum, just like this guy blows, he can't understand, you know. But dude, that's part of the deal, you <laughs> yeah. dumb son of a bitch. You right, know? because because that's why would why would I be sitting there saying on the microphone, I can't understand yeah. a word you're saying, Rivera? That was that was what it was supposed to be, dude. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, but but I learned very quickly back in those days not to pay attention to um, anything on social media because if you read a positive comment, you're going to run into a negative comment. So I remember yeah. just to let you know, like the A O X P W also had a forum on the XPWrestling.com with like a AOL people would write their opinions, and I remember in the early days, people that would like us, but then the detractors, Joey Styles rip off all this stuff. Oh, of course, like. Yeah, and I would be like, it would, it would kind of like, and I was younger then too, so I was like, oh man, this sucks. But I remember learning very quickly, like, oh my gosh, I, I shouldn't read any of this stuff. Like, do like don't read it. So, Develop the, 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 right. So, thick, so, thick skin. Chip. Yeah, that's right. It, it didn't do you any good, right, to read this stuff, and and so, and it gave you a thick skin. But check this out, dude. I remember like, before Facebook, it was MySpace, right? Right. And I remember when MySpace came out immediately because of that experience in the XPW chat rooms and all SoCal and censored, I remember like, oh, this is the exact same thing, but for the public. Right. And so I remember thinking like as people were getting into it and then Facebook came around, I was so glad I had that early education on like how social media can be like. Right. So I remember like I didn't subscribe to any of that stuff. And then I just witnessed the basically the general public doing 
what you and I were doing because we were showcased on television through XPW chat rooms. And I remember like thinking like, dude, this is not a good thing for the public, for society, for kids especially. And sure enough, look at that, like in the last 10, 15 years, all the bullying, cyber bullying, the suicide, it was like, that's exactly what happened. And and like we got that, we experienced, we had direct experience with that concept before any of that was launched to the public in a way, you know? So so it was, again, one of the other things just to be grateful for it and kind of like be a little bit ahead of the curve, right? Because again, we, right, we right, have yeah. experiencing that. But um, okay, Rivera, so check this out. So you're in XPW now, we're on television, right? And And now we are getting our groove, right? At least I can speak for myself, but I feel like the both of us, as every as each episode passed by, episode one, episode two, by the time we got, and there were, by the way, 131 total XPW episodes, right? So, so by the time we got, let's say to episode 15 or 20, then you and I were like, we were starting to gel, like the banter going back and forth, and it was getting, we were grooving, right? And we can make a situation that was like very uh, uh, mundane or uh, innocuous. We can make that, we could add a little spice to it, right? Uh, like the days of like Rocco and Jocko kicking a box in the parking oh, lot and right. nothing was going on and Ooh. it was boring. And we would do, we would, we would be able to kind of have, again, have the freedom to put in filler right there with our with our stuff and that was always fun and like when when uh onita and sabu did their oh, thing at the hotel that, that, that that's one of that that's one of my favorite moments yeah me one too. one of my favorite moments man it was great <laughs> was like when the, when the camera was on us and we were like walking out of the room at the hotel it's like we're just walking through the hotel but you and i are bantering like like a grumpy old man you know and like what are you talking about rivera you, did you see what just happened like like it was just funny because it was like that is not how two guys would talk in real life walking through a hotel but we were you know what i mean like i mean we, they set the table on fire yeah right. yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, so that was fans for, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about. At one point in time when we were doing shows at the L.A. Sports Arena, great experience. Um, uh, the, the plan at that time, they were going to bring Onita in, and it was going to be the first ever exploding ring uh, cage death match in the United States. Because that stuff, you only saw that back then in Japan. Right, and you had to like you know, Larry, like getting the tapes, and that would those were gold, right? We gotta we gotta figure out the episode number of that of that tape. Okay, yeah, figure I'll, out what episode, and then add it to a comment on this or something if you can, because that's, yeah. that's 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 gold. That's worth, yeah. Right. So Onita, so Onita, Onita press conference. Yeah. So Rob even, Black. Rob Black. Chris Kloss. I just remember you and I were like, here we got Onita, Sabu, the photographers, and then you see you and me in the background just going, <laughs> like, shut, shut up, up. shut up, chick. Yeah. And, and it was like, you look back at that stuff, it literally is like Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is. Oh, um, man. But but yeah, that was that was, so that was at a time in the company where we were already at the sports arena, but then we lost the LA sports arena. And we were we were gearing up to have that freaking match, dude. A missed opportunity right oh, there. Oh yeah, right. And, and yeah, because that well, would that, because that was the the the, the whole buildup was uh, it was gonna be uh, Rob's looking for the new XPW arena. Yep, right. That's going to be like the bigger, bigger than anything, you know. And then the XPW arena never materialized. No, and so we had, we had like, after we lost the sports arena, we had a big lull where we weren't doing any shows. And, and, and then, like, the first show was like months later, which was Metal Fest in San Bernardino. But, um, <laughs> right from the sports arena. Ah, yeah. What do you Larry, what are you, are you a rooster? <laughs> but uh, but uh, 
but but so so there was a lot of filler, a lot of sh- uh, just promos and skits, non wrestling, uh, unfortunately, which turned a lot of fans off at that time, understandably, right? Because we weren't doing shows. But um, but let me ask you this, Larry, um, what was it like for you uh, to to be a part of um, shows at the LA Sports Arena in the Grand Olympic Auditorium? Well, you know, I mean, uh, sports arena is one thing, but the Olympic, dude, that's that that that's like, you know, as you hear me saying in that commentary, you know, the ghosts, the <laughs> ghosts are or the ghosts are flying around, man, and that was no joke, you know that that's yeah. that's a, that's a sacred building, man. Right. Uh, uh, sports arena, you know, that's a great, you know, all kinds of stuff's gone on there, but. Olympic Auditorium, man. That's you know, that's where that's where everything happened. Yeah. So uh you know, the, the those couple times where me and you got to walk into the in the middle of the ring, oh. in the in the middle of the Olympic and look around and and, and I'm getting goosebumps now yeah, thinking yeah. about it. But uh, uh it'd be like, you know, this is this this is what what it's all about. If I would have known when I was sitting in that second, third row in 75, 76, 77, somebody would have told me you're going to be standing in the middle talking to the people. I said, you're, you're crazy. So, so uh, yeah, that was uh, was a a beautiful thing, man. But with sports, sports arena shows good. We're good too. I was surprised at the crowds that, mm-hmm. that showed up for those sports arena shows. And uh, and rabid. They weren't just sitting yes. on the screen. They were rabid. Right. It was cra- crazy. Yeah. You know what? I have some – I actually went through some old photos, uh, Chico, and I, I had family that came to those shows, and maybe we'll we'll pop them up here. But um, uh, great photos of you and myself <laughs> and, and – and, just, just really yeah. good memories. Watch, looking at those photos, my friend. Just do, do you remember? Did, did we have? We might have had an eight by tens uh, that they sold at the gimmick tables. Right. I'm not sure. But. Yeah, there was a couple shots of like you and myself standing next to each other. Right. Yeah, as as the announcing, but you know they actually didn't do too much. They kind of like were preoccupied with the wrestlers. They actually didn't touch with us or the referees, you know, but again, no complaints because we were showcased on television. I had an interview with Patrick Hernandez, uh, the great referee, Patrick. Oh, great. Yeah. One of the finest refs, not just here in SoCal, but really one of the best referees ever. And, um, you know, we, he and I were talking and, you know, cause I get asked the question a lot. I'm sure you do. And Patrick does like, did you ever want to be a wrestler? And I personally, I'm like, I just want to be a part of the business. Right. And, um, and, but you know, what's funny is Patrick brought up a good point where you're, you're, yourself and me and him is like, well, if you really think about it, you're, you're not a wrestler, but you're on every match. We were on. Yeah. Every oh, yeah. Match. Yeah. Some guys, some guys, they wrestle, they got to wait like two, three, maybe a month until they're, they get more TV time. So, I mean, I didn't really go into it thinking that at the time, but as years went on, you look back like, well, there's advantages to any position you have in wrestling. Not only are you on in every match, but you have an important role in every match. So uh, even even that more of a of an involvement thing. So again, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, to totally. whoever. Uh, yeah, man. Totally. Because so well, let me ask. You- let me ask you, Rivera, since you are, and no joke, it's not a gimmick, uh, you do appreciate the old school. Do you have some favorite matches or favorite match in XPW? Uh, or say favorite wrestlers? You know, um, one, of the, one of the best matches I saw was pre-Larry Rivera, I think was at uh, the uh, – the palace at one of those palace shows. I don't know how many you ran there. Was it one or two, maybe three tops? 
It was more. Yeah. Um, uh, but there was, I remember going to one show and seeing a match with uh, Messiah and Dynamite D. I knew you were going to say Dynamite D, man. And, and, and it was, it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a hardcore match. Wasn't, you know, light bulbs or anything. It was a straight, straight match. And it was that I said, wow, these guys, these guys are turning it on, man. Yeah. And uh, so I, I would say that, that, and maybe some of the super dragon matches. True. Super dragon matches later. Uh, you remember that, that the tape, the we wrestle. Yes. Yeah. We wrestle. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the, the the matches on there are, right. are, are great. You know, you had Super Dragon, Excalibur, who is now a uh, yeah, is uh, elevated to the uh, and, and my, more power to him, man. He, he is. He is. About, he deserves it. You know. He, so is, ele he, is, he is elevated to the the high altitude. He did, he did. <laughs> <laughs> the upper echelon, Chico. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, uh, I actually, I actually got to work with him post, post XPW in in uh, Epic. Okay, right. you remember Epic, Gary App, uh, yeah. Epic Pro Wrestling, and uh, me and Excalibur did the uh, did the, the 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 TV stuff. But right. uh, hey, yeah, man, always good to see. Uh, one of our boys. Uh, oh, totally, man. Getting getting down. Yeah, be, it's it's really cool, yeah. man. And yeah. um, and uh, so so yeah, you that I mean, I had a feeling you were going to bring up Dynamite D as most do when when talk about great wrestlers. You Dude, know? and you know what? You know what? Uh, it, it, this is ironic. When I left the studio that night after the the, the blow up with Rob Black, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But yeah, go that ahead. That was the that was the last face I saw. Wow. When I was leaving, I with my git with my guitar and my amp, I was walking out the, the, the door and and here comes Dynamite D. And I go I said, hey Darren, I said, dude, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm mm -hmm. done. He goes, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm done. Well go talk to Kevin. He'll tell you more. I was pissed. I just I just left. So so and, Chico, and so talk a little bit about that because okay just to let people know, like, it was a grind when we would meet in that office. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. It was, the job was great. It was a lot of fun. We worked with a lot of great people. We got to do what we loved, which was wrestling announcing. And so kind of the, 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 the agenda was we would get there. Webb would, would be ready to go. Webb was the guy in the edit bay. And this is where we would call that week's TV episode matches, say three, four, sometimes two, maybe five matches, right? And we would call the matches. And then from there, we would go into the warehouse where the TV studio was set up, where myself and Rivera would do the wraparounds, intro to the show, hype the next match, uh, do the, do the uh, uh, promos, uh, between matches, ex basically explained during a wrestling show, and then we would close it out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, tickets available for the Grand Olympic, blah, blah, blah. And so that was the wraparounds we would do. But Rob Black just took his time. He he would – we would be there, man, till 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And so we were kind of prepared for that. But, you know, there were some nights where I would come in, I'd have a bad day, and Rivera would come in, he'd have a bad day, but we'd get through it. Um, now, that was the last night. We were kind of used to that routine, but like you were talking to me, and I remember this too, uh, you warned, Kevin, you warned Rob, hey, I know we stay late, but on this week, this Wednesday night, uh, me, I think you even warned him like two weeks in advance, Rivera, if I'm not mistaken, but but you, you let them know, like, hey, on this night, I, I, I got to get out of here at a certain time. I got to get out of here early. So they were definitely prepared. They had, they had all the, uh, you, you gave them all the info, right? But um, so we go in there, standard Wednesday night. We go in, we do the matches with Webb, and then from there, it was like we thought, oh, we're good. We get to get out of here early. Even I did, even though I didn't have to be anywhere. Bonus, Rivera's got to get out of here early. That means I get out of here early. So we were like, after we called the matches with Webb, 
we go into the uh, studio, the warehouse, and we're like, uh oh, you know, they're not set up yet. And I was, uh, I was concerned about you that night, right? Because, and I felt, Rivera, dude, I felt it that night too before it happened. I'm like thinking to myself, if they're not set up, he's going to be pissed and justifiably so. And I would just hope to God, like, oh, please let this go. But it didn't. Did you want to elaborate on that, sir? Uh, well, just to, you know, to, to go back a little bit on, on what you were talking about, there were, there were times when there even, there were even delays, uh, on calling the matches because they, right. they, because Kevin and Rob would be debating on what, what we would talk about during the commentary. Yeah. So there were delays even with that. Yeah. So, you know, you know, we wouldn't start on the commentary till, you know, we'd get there at 10, 9, 10, and we wouldn't start till midnight, yeah. you know. And, and uh, so I was, you know, I was fully aware of this. And this was a night, you know, uh, this was right around September 11, too. Was like mm. not, okay. not, not, too, not too long after, I'd say it's maybe November. Okay. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, I knew well in advance I had this gig. It was on a, you know, Wednesday night and, mm -hmm. and we taped that, we taped and the, the office was in Van Nuys. Yeah. This gig was in Santa Monica, the great temple bar, no longer there Oh wow! in, in Santa Monica. And, and, uh, it was hyped up gig, man. There was going to be, there's a shit ton of people going to be there. There's no way I could miss this thing. So, yeah. you know, I, I told them, Hey, I, I, if, if, if we're not done by this time, I'm leaving, you know, I'm, I, I have no choice. Yeah. And that's what happened. And I walked in, I remember I walked into Rob's office. I said, Hey Rob, I got to leave. And he was on the phone. Yeah. And he said, what you're leaving? Fuck you. He, he took the phone and yeah. threw it. <laughs> he threw the phone and it, it literally went through the wall. But the, uh, this part, you know, not the, not the big part, just the, yeah. the, 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 what you hold up, you know, yeah, the, 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 the earpiece, the voice yeah. piece. And he just threw that and, <laughs> and it kind of bounced back because it was connected with the cord. And when I saw that, I said, man, is this shit worth it? Is this right. worth it? You know, like we barely got paid, you know, yeah. only time we got paid is when we asked, when we yeah. asked to get paid, yeah. you know, it's like, Hey, you know, give us a handout. And, and, and I said, is this worth it? And, and then and that's when I said, I'm done, man. Walked out yeah. next, you know, next day called Kevin to that's, that's it. That's it. And before I know that here's the, Here's the, the 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 fake. That's when I knew. That's when I knew that the the Larry Rivera character was something because here's a golden opportunity, dude, to introduce a new a new co-host, right? A new color guy. P perfect opportunity. You got all these guys. You got all these dudes, man. You got all all, all these guys that know their shit. Bring bring in a good. Co what do they do? A fucking Larry Rivera imitator. What yeah. is that? What does that tell you? What does that yeah. tell you, man? You know that that, that, that it that, you know. <laughs> what does I that know. tell you? The only people that suffer are the fans. If if you know if someone thought he was getting one over on me, I would just sat there and said, "What? The, this guy's a clown." You know, this it's it's it's, 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 it's a perfect perfect chance. To get somebody a new a new person over, and you blew it. And, and so hey, what am I going to say? It's a good point you bring up because really, yeah. essentially, all that did was put you over. Right, right, yeah. exactly. And, and and it's like it's like fake Diesel, fake Razor Ramon. Keep fake them Razor in the, Razor. You know, I'm still in the you know. If if you were somebody like that in the, in the old school in the old school days. You, like if something like that happens, you would be erased like right. like yesterday's news. 
-hmm. like the, the newspaper, like it's thrown out. You're done. <laughs> We're not going to mention you ever again. And here you are bringing in a, a, a new dude, you know, with this freaking gleaming tooth, you know? <laughs> you know? Come on, man. You yeah. Know? I know no, that. You know, I, I mean, no ill will to the dude. You know, I know no. I'm, I'm probably, he was just, you know, following orders. He just yeah. wanted to stay employed with the company, but and you was, son yeah. of a bitch. You and know? It was, yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't, and it really was, it was just anybody would have taken that opportunity, right? Cause you're on television and you get to do that. But, but uh, I mean, the middle finger really just goes up to whose decision that was. It wasn't about Gabriel himself because. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, and and, and I know, on, and and I would, you know, I I kind of went off on the epic, on the epic tapings. I know I would go, I, I would take direct shots, you know, yeah. direct shot right at him. So, uh, uh, you know, no, no, no ill will, like I say. But uh, at the time, you know, what are you going to do, man? You got to fight fire with fire. Well, he didn't so, like it, and I could tell you right yeah. now. Gabriel was the cool guy, really, really liked him a lot. But I, yeah. but during that time when we would kind of be off to the side talking, he's like, I got to I can't keep doing this. I got it. And then, then he became one Tastico. But, but um, because at first he was being called Larry Rivera and, and um, he personally did not like it. And he, I remember he was concerned what you thought and all that. But so it really was just a biz. It was a, it was a upper management decision. So on a personal level, I can just attest to the fact that like no fan should really take uh, um, look at it personally with this guy, you know, and, and it was just it was just a, a circumstance, uh, luck and timing. And and uh, it was like it was an opportunity and he took it. And uh, but it wasn't his decision. It was, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, so speaking of that, dude, like overall, like. I mean, this is a lot to unpack, but what what were your thoughts? Uh, obviously, we see it right there for that one moment. But overall, what are your thoughts on Rob Black? Oh, I mean, you know, uh, pretty in an innovative mind, I'd have to say. I mean, uh, you're going to get a lot of crap because you're just, you know, trying to knock off something that's happening on the East coast in the form of ECW, you know, uh, but that being said, I mean, he, 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 him and Kevin put together a, a, an operation that, that caught the attention of the world, man, you know, wrestling world for, for, for better or worse. Right. Uh, you know, there was a lot of shit talking, man, especially after that uh, that uh, heat wave 2000 right. at, at the Olympic, man. That was, you know, <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys had a lot of balls, man. I remember I was at that show, too. I was at that show on the other really? side, sitting on the other side. And and uh, again, with the late, great Eric Caden from uh, Hollywood Book and Poster. And and I just went to, you know, just just to have a good time, you know. Yeah, I was, I was just a, a wrestling fan, just you know, there for for the for the action. And uh, when I heard all that shit going on, man, Eric was like, "Dude, I think it, it might be a good idea." Because I I I we had met there. I I drove myself. Mm -hmm. We had met. He goes, "You know what, man? It might be a good idea if you, you know." I'll fill you in on what happens. And, and I, I split early, you know? Um, yeah. So, say, because a lot of people don't yeah. know that you were there. You were, but you came oh, there. Yeah. You were just there on your own. Pat, I was a fan on the other side, on the other side. Totally. I totally remember my seat because I was looking right at you guys. Okay. And going, going okay. Shit. And I remember, I didn't know totally what was going to happen. I just remember Rob saying, yeah, I bought, I bought some tickets. I bought tickets for the for the pay per view, you know, at the at the at the office. He was he was saying that, and I said, oh, "Hey, hey, man, right on." Well, look, I'll see you there. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, uh, shit, man, when I saw, it, I was like, "Wow, this shit's getting crazy." You guys and that and that that was heat. 
that was heat like uh yeah you know that's crazy because yeah. Like you were there as Pat Howard, right? You were right, you were, absolutely. Yeah. And, totally. and like a lot of people don't know that you were there. Um, but yeah, like when you say, like, even though you weren't involved and you were just going there as yourself as a fan, it's like, oh shit, once that happened, and there were XPW fans there, but it was mostly, of course, ECW fans. But like once that was like it was enemy territory when all that shit went down, even though you weren't involved in it you're still an XPW guy. And it's like, I better, was was that what you were feeling? Like, kind of like, I better get out of here right now? Well, I, I, I remember before the show even started, you know, sitting down and me and Eric sitting there bullshitting, you know, having a beer. And I looked over and I see this guy, Dreadlock. I call him Dreadlock, man. Dreadlock man, and and uh, somebody tells me though this guy is uh, what's his name, Doc Doc, Doc Marley. Marley, yeah, and he's he's all animated. I remember this very vividly. I'm looking yeah. at this guy; he's all animated. He's talking to the Atlas security, and he's all animated, and he's pointing at you guys. <laughs> he's <laughs> you guys are already sitting down, you know, and yeah. and you got that you know the XPW shirts are on and inside out. No, somebody, somebody, I think one, somebody had the shirt oh, already, I think it was, I think already it was, on. I think it was Lester because somebody, somebody was already flying the colors. Yeah. So. You know what happened with Supreme Joey chaos? He told me the story, which was like when, when everybody was told to turn their XPW logos, like WWE F WCW was allowed, but just XPW. And like, and like when Supreme walked up the way Joey described it was like, um, the security is like, are you going to tell him to turn his shirt inside out? Like, no, are you? No. So like, who's going to tell Supreme what to do? Right. So, so he was, he was the one that w walked in there and then nobody gave him shit. You know what I mean? But, but the, yeah. This guy's, this guy's off on the side. He's all animated and point and pointing to you guys. And that's, that's the first inkling that I got that I, okay, okay. Something, something's, may may happen here mm -hmm. you know, right we'll see but uh guys are freaking dreadlocks are flying around and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who is this cat you know yeah. so yeah so yeah so you made the decision to take off and leave yeah, right right before the main event yeah which is when all was which is when all hell broke loose um yeah, right was that right. your kind of like your thought process though like uh oh, like this is getting pretty fucking hardcore out here, and they're and going then, to anything and, and, and then a couple hours later, I, I logged on to whatever that uh, you know, if it was XP, you know, whatever message board was on, and then I started reading about yeah, these guys got their asses handed to them in the parking lot, and I'm thinking, well, who is it? Who is it? Was it the wrestlers? And then it's just like, no, it's a, they eventually learn it's, it's, it's the Street crew dudes handing out flyers, you know, kids, girl. kids. So yeah, and I guess so like yeah, big. What's that? Fat Sal is knocking out, you know, yeah. a, a girl and oh and, yeah, or, that was know, the street was team. That initially I thought it was like full on, you know, chingasos <laughs> with 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 the with the you know with the crew crew versus crew. But right. then there was like, are you kidding me, man? These guys are just attacking these. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Like. Okay. So then you just took off. And do you remember now when you left the arena with the Grand Olympic? You walked outside. Did you witness anything? And did you? Were Were people talking to you that recognized you? Like. No. Like, not. Not. Not at all. Not okay. at all. Not at all. Like, I, I, I. 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 I went. Uh, I went full stealth. You know. Yeah. I didn't look. I didn't look at anybody. Right. You know, nobody looked at me. Uh, you know, you act invisible. Yeah. You just walked out and, and there was nothing going on. There was nothing going on in the street. Okay. You know, and I, and, and I know that, you know, since I'm a kid, like I said, I'm going to that, that, uh, that arena. Yeah. So I knew the whole, I knew the layout. I knew the, all the streets, the surrounding streets. And uh, you always park, you know, there's this one street where there's always spots. Mm -hmm. So I came up with like two blocks. West, 
So it jumped right. over there and I was like, gone. I was on the 110, done, yeah. gone. You know, so, and then like a couple hours, said, like I said, looking later and on the message boards, chaos in the parking lot, chingazos. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a crazy time. Rivera, were you, oh no, you weren't there, but where, what did you think, like when you left XPW, that was before, uh, we went back east. That was before. That was also before. You left just before the Vic Grimes New Jack freefall, right? That's right. Exactly. I I left all, but you know, I missed out on the plane flights to Philadelphia and all that. I didn't. I, I, I honestly, you. I didn't I miss you. anything. I I missed having you there too, my friend. Really. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank I you. I mean, it was it was kind yeah. of a chore actually to call those matches. I mean, I'm very grateful, but. It's a lot, it's a bigger job to call a match by yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I have a lot of respect for Lance Russell, Joey Styles, Bill oh, Murray. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Those Bob guys. Cottle, Bob Cottle. Bob Cottle, too. Heavy, right. Heavy, heavy load on the shoulder. Jeez. Yeah. And yeah. and it was a little bit more plain without you there. Like, I would crack jokes, I would say funny things, but nothing compared to like getting the response and the reply and bouncing off and the energy we would, we would share and, and deliver to the, um, over the mic, man. And so I, I really, um, noticed and was aware and conscious of how great that was teaming up with you, man, especially when I had to do those matches by myself, but yeah, it was, it was a bummer, man. And, um, but that was just the way it was at the time. And, uh, and again, at that time, too, I was appreciating you even more at that point, definitely after you'd left, you know, uh, not just as a fan, but, but now understanding, like, you know, the wraparounds were fun, but there was, it was just, it, it was become, it was plain. I would still do my comedy and all that, but is something definitely missing at that point. But now when you watched, when you watched it, Rivera, what were, what were your thoughts when you watched the new Jack Vic Grimes, for example? Uh, that was, uh, to be, well, to be, first of all, to be honest with you, I pretty much stopped. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I pretty much right. stopped watching, you know, totally. I mean, uh, there was, uh, you know, even at the time there was enough, wrestling to watch totally you know with the, yeah. the, the monday night wars and yeah all that so i i you know i said uh, i'm why go out of my way so I, I i more or less stopped watching but i did you know read about you know i was still a a, a newsletter subscriber at the time and read about the vic grimes and new jack thing and it was just like, you know, but back to, you know, the violent crap. <laughs> yeah. Violent crap. I said, man, then then now that finally, dude, well, somebody could have died. Yeah. And, and it narrowly, you know, by who knows, by who knows how much, man. But uh it was close. That 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 that's that was at the Olympic, right? Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah. That was the last shows there. I love how when you talk about your role as like the announcer, like when I remember like at one point when you said like Chico, this XPW, the violent crap is is the garbage wrestling, Chico. Why do they have to do this this crap? And I remember like I remember like I just came out of character. I'm like, why do you work here? If you hate it so much, why are you even here doing the stuff that you hate to do so much? You know, but like I have to call the matches. And like, and I remember it hit me like, why, as a character, like, why are you here? <laughs> no, why do you have to be? No one says you have to do this. Like, it was just, it was like, as the character, like, it was just funny, man. It, it was because, funny. because occasionally the diamond shines through, Chico. <laughs> yeah, and, and also yeah. because I have to educate these fans that, that, these, that like this crap. These man. people, <laughs> these people, they, 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 Oh man, Stanislav Sapisko. Um, yeah, and and just the um, oh man, it was just it was just fun, man. With like when you would go into like uh like Cuban Spanish kind of rant, and I and I would 
like not understand what you're saying, dude. You know, and all this. Hey, you know, I remember, you know, I remember one of the funny ones was you would uh, when we talk about um, La Familia, and and I would claim to be cool with them. Like I, I've been hanging out drinking to Kate's with those guys, <laughs> and and the La family and me were dogs. And then you would just look at me like. Like you don't know what you're talking about. Like, ah, oh, maybe I'll I'll put in a good word for you, Rivera, with those cats. Well, that was the there was the, the time where I actually, you know, took off. I actually I actually went to Cuba. Right, right. I actually did go. And I I took a video camera with me. Yeah. I I found a dude there. I taught him how to use the video camera and we went and shot some promos. Yeah. With, you know, like Rob Black, you know, it, it was great. We spent like a whole day, like two, three hours going to all these like famous Cuban landmarks. And I would stand there and Robert Black and coming back and taking back what is rightfully mine, Chico. You threw me off for no reason. You know, <laughs> oh, and there's there's all kinds of footage. Okay. I remember Rivera getting the old <laughs> massage on the beach. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that, <laughs> that too. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, yeah, uh, one of the one of my my uh, funny moments with you two is when they had on XPW uh, website they had uh, cast your vote now. Who is the true host of XPW TV? <laughs> and 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 like. I, I, it was close, right? I think any, either one of us could have won, but I won by a smidge, right? And, and you claimed like internet fraud, Chico, this is internet <laughs> fraud. And then that's when like the phone call came in. And then I, I, I was actually going on vacation at that time to visit my family in Washington state to visit my right. dad. And, and so, so because it was internet fraud, I, I was sent to prison, not jail, prison. And, and you were there for a few weeks, and then I came back, right. jumpsuit on, and I actually had to cut my hair for a job. So, like, as if it was the military, they shaved the hair off my head, right, <laughs> for prison. Oh, and man. it was just like those those were just the best, man. And, and that was just an example right there of one of those nights where we had to take it 20, 30 times because we were just laughing, dude, the whole time trying to get through it, man. <laughs> Oh man, just mm -hmm. awesome stuff, dude. So good times, brother. Good, good times. Talking about all this right now, talking about um the ups and downs, the trials, the tribulations, but also we're talking about the platform that we had to do this on, right? We were on television throughout North America. All our home videos went worldwide. Looking back on it now, Rivera, I guess trying to take maybe it's a little harder for you or myself to kind of step out of looking at XPW, stepping out of the roles we were in and, and all the stuff we got to do. In your opinion though, as a great wrestling fan, uh, someone who's knowledgeable about the business, I mean, talk about it from the standpoint of Lair Rivera, but also from Pat Hoett of what you think the legacy is of XPW. Uh, well, and it, it I think most of all, it's an example of, of what can happen if you get, whether by, by hook or by crook, or whether it's by luck or by chance, when you get together a, a ragtag group of, of individuals who are maybe 85, 90% on the same kind of track, mental track, towards the same goal, a lot of things can happen. And uh, that, that you know, for a while it was a real, it was a magical time, man. Yeah. And uh, there was, you know, I don't know whether it's chemistry, but there was, you know, a good straight shot where, where we were, you know, firing on all cylinders, man. You know, yeah. there was no like dead space in the commentary we were just bang, 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 getting it on, and uh, so it's it's uh, it's a testament to to what what can happen when uh, when when you get 
when you get the like minds together. Yeah. And to quote to quote uh, the great Jimmy Snooker, man, when when you flying when you're flying over that ocean, brother, <laughs> when you're flying over that ocean and you look down and you don't know what's under there, brother. <laughs> yeah, brother. Yeah. The truth, brother. Yeah. You know, it's like it's so funny. There, we all come from all different walks of life and we're different ages and all of us are just regular guys. But once we got in there, we became a team and it was like, there was never like criteria or lesson plans of how this all works. We just all got it and then started operating as one, as a team. There was no explanation needed, you know, because we all understood. It's like the quote, if you don't get it, no explanation will do. If you do get it, no explanation is necessary. And and that's what it was for us. We We all like, just lived out our dreams, dude. And then, and then we ran with it and it was just, it was like something that we all in a way knew from when we were kids, you know? And, and then we, and then you add to that just the direct learning experience of being a part of it, being on that side of the curtain. I always found it so rewarding, Larry, to like for myself, like, Oh my gosh, I was always on the outside of the curtain. It was such an honor and privilege to be on this side of the curtain, whether it was at the live show or doing the TV show. It was like, this is this is unreal. This is a privilege and an honor. And I remember you too, man, you had a lot of respect for that. And I did too. Oh, yeah. and, and, and the kayfabe and protecting the business and putting the guys over and, and, um, that was so important and 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 it just that doing that made it so much more enjoyable and cool because that just showed you right there that you're operating as if you are on this inside part of the curtain and it was like it was you're right dude it was magic bro it was like absolute magic man and then the reward of having that platform getting to see that on television too it was like how did this happen? You know, and it did. Says America won. <laughs> America won. And I remember uh, uh, going to uh, in Silver Lake. Here is a bar called the uh, Spaceland. Okay. Dream Spaceland, and and every Saturday night they'd have it. You know, there's a oh. TV in the corner, and they'd have it. You know, they'd have it on. Dude, you're on. They're like, oh, be packed. Wow. Nice. Silver Lake Madness, you know. That's so great. Man, there there yeah. was a place in Woodland Hills called Yankee Doodles, and, and they would show it too. Oh, you guys would go to see the pay-per-views there. Yeah, we do that. We do that too. And then on Saturday nights, the guy was a big fan. Unfortunately, he passed away, Rob Favel. But he was he was a good guy, and he was like wanting us to come in and and he would turn it to it, put it on on Saturday nights, man. And, and um, it was just an honor and a privilege, you know, and uh, I always wanted to do better. Let me ask you this, Larry. Do you think that like, see, I hold the sports arena and the Olympic in high regard, but I, but you were just a little opposite. You love the sports arena, but you really love the Olympic. I love the Olympic, but I really love the sports arena. Right. So, and again, it's just cause I grew up going to shows there. Do you think that as an announcer and as we were like announcing the product on television, being that we were doing shows at the Olympic and the sports arena, do you feel that you, that upped your game or that even like, or, and, or you wanted to do that much better because you are calling a match from, from this arena where all the legends called matches before us? Well, I, I, I can't speak for the sports arena, but, definitely for the Olympic, you know, anytime yeah. I was in there, you know, and we were doing those Tony T uh, uh, commentaries. Yeah. I felt the charge, man. Yeah. You know, like I said, uh, you know, and, and it's a, the line I say over and over the ghost, the ghosts are flying around. Yeah. You can, you know, you can, you can feel them. You can see them. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, 
and uh, you know they, they started having punk rock shows right at 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 the Olympic right after, right after uh, you know the, you know because the the LaBelle promotion died in in late 1982 okay and by that point you know Golden Voice uh, which is like the big concert promotion. Right. Uh, company in in pretty much the the, the country right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they started running shows there, like the big first punk show they they did there was Public Image, okay. uh, with you know Johnny Rotten, you know from uh, Sex Pistols, uh, right. and uh, Black Flag played there, you know famous show. Uh, so. Uh, you know, and a lot of those kids, man, they would just like destroy. There was these paintings of boxers and and oh. wrestlers, and they would just thrash these these paintings. And I would, you know, I would go to these shows because I was a fan of the bands and stuff. And but I'd be seeing this stuff, going, "Oh man, oh, this is this yeah. is crazy, this is wild." But uh, hey, you know, evolution. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it, it was great to do to do commentary at the at the at the uh, Olympic, and you know I even went to I remember going to WWF shows at the Sports Arena, mm -hmm. big sellouts, Hulk Hogan, you know Howard mm -hmm. Finkel, or wait no no Billy Anderson yeah Billy Anderson yeah Billy Anderson would be the, the only uh, time the, the only time great. the only time Finkel I don't think ever did. Was when they were there because he was WrestleMania too. Well, he he was at NASA because uh, that was the one where they did three locations. Okay, okay. So so he was there. The I think the only two times Finkel was there was they did Saturday night's main event once at the Sports Arena in '86, and then they did of course WrestleMania seven in '91. That, I think that was the only two times Finkel was at wow. the school arena. Wow. But yeah, Bill Anderson and again Gary Key Tool was kind of tied into that group. Yeah. Jesse Hernandez. Uh, that big shout played. out to Bill Anderson. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. man. All those guys, Jesse, Gary Key, Bill, all those guys, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like like um, when we would do shows at like a regular, or when we did indie stuff later on, it was like you had to almost like up your excitement because I mean, how cool was that? Like, okay, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to XPW TV. My name is Chris Kloss, sitting next to Larry Rivera and we're coming to you right now from the Los Angeles sports arena. Just saying that was <laughs> like, gave you something at yeah, least for yeah. me when I was doing the commentary. So, and then I think of like all the greats did, right. And, yeah, and, yeah. um, yeah, and so I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, as far as SoCal history for wrestling, we're now in that group. We're we're our names are in that group. So I mean, it was like so back then thinking about that was so surreal. And it's like it's now you have you're obligated to do a decent job because because you got you got to you got to walk in those same shoes now. And and I and I know that you, which I appreciated, man, which was that you took it, you took that very seriously, and and, and paying right. off those legends, even though the 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 you know the voice and the accent was a joke, yeah, no. it was uh, the all 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 biz, all serious. Yeah, that was yeah. the stick, man. Yeah. That was your gimmick, dude. Yeah, which is funny because yeah. we talked about this off air, but like. People would think that my name, because of the way it's spelled and it's and it's it looks like a stage name, and your Le Rivera just seems like a common name. That yours was your real name, and mine was a uh, a work name. But really, my name is what you see, and your name is the fake name. So it's kind of funny how people, people would think that. But um, so okay, Rivera. So we're getting we're getting like we talked about the legacy of XPW. Um, so another thing I want to touch on right now is when you and I kind of, we, we actually, after XPW was shut down, we actually, you and I would get booked a, a few times together. Uh, like when we did those, uh, LXW out in New York and, and all that right. stuff. And so people wanted us as a team, uh, right. for a while. Yeah. And, and, um, can't have one without the other type thing. So, so we,
of that. But then there was a big lull. But then we got to work together for the first time in a long time. What did it mean to you, the whole thing, when we did the reunion show, XPW, Cold Day in Hell? How was that to you? Oh, that was that that was great, man. That was uh, that was awesome. I think, you know, and I'm trying to recall, did we do something just prior to that? At um, There was some show on Santa Monica Boulevard. You remember that? Well, that was that was the um, that was what we did afterward. XPW ten. You mean talk in Hollywood, right? Yeah, that so was that, post. That was post Cold Day in Hell. Yeah, that was post. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, Cold Day in Hell coming out there. That was. Uh, you know, I got the DVD right here. I'm gonna have to throw <laughs> throw right. that on. But yeah, that was uh, man. You know, good time seeing uh, Kid Chaos and and Supreme. Uh, yeah. Great day, man. Great yeah, day. And, and I tell you, Larry, like it was fun because we, I actually saw you uh, just before that and I i told Houston, I'm like, you know, you, if I'm gonna do this, you gotta, cause we just got done with Wrestling Society X. I said, you know, this is XPW, man. Like I, Rivera's gotta be there. Like he's gotta be there. And then that's right after I, I saw you randomly uh, I was there with Mike Hartsfield as you were doing commentary for the LA Derby Dolls roller derby. That's right. And I and I was listening over the head and I'm like, that's for Vera, dude. What, what the hell? And I found you. I was like, Chico, what's up, man? And you know, we hadn't seen each other for a while at that point. But but you know what was great, man? When we did Cold Day in Hell and we we did the wraparounds and then we called the matches. It was like we we left off like we did it just yesterday, right? Absolutely, yeah. totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like riding, riding a bike, like riding a bike, like the great Dr. Jerry Graham said, like World War Three. Well, dude, there you go. And we just we just jinxed ourselves. We both are like minds, great minds, <laughs> like because we both said riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it cold day and hell. It was great being in the room with you and. It was it was really special when we came out to the ring uh, for the opener of the show. I I was almost got choked up because, I mean, there were fans that were just like just standing and like, like just to us for being there. Yeah, too. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was, yeah. It was meant a lot, dude. And it, it was just cool to just have bring the band back together for for yeah, another right. gig. Absolutely. We were supposed to keep going on, but. You know, we talked about it on Extreme Memories in the past, but it was the economy crash at the time, and Big Vision was planning on doing like monthly or bi-monthly pay-per-views. You know, uh, right. with that, but it never unfolded. But at least we got to do that, and uh, and again, work together once again. Uh, the wraparounds, the um, you know, the 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 banter back and forth, and the the bad guy, the good guy, and all that stuff was just phenomenal, and um, and uh, the, the broken English and of course um, a milk toast over here doesn't understand a word of what you know all that stuff is just just hilarious dude and um but the before we before we get going Larry and it was uh beyond a pl pleasure reconnecting with you my friend um absolutely. absolutely yeah um but before we go um share with the fans um about a couple of guys, man. A couple of guys we lost way too early. I know you shared about Dynamite D, and he, he, um, he. We lost him a while ago, but um, and we actually lost Felony as well. But him and and if any memories you have of the late great legendary Supreme or anybody else you can think of that. Uh, you know, man. Uh, if if there was ever uh the dichotomy, the duality of a personality, it was supreme because he was uh, a beast, man. He was a beast, you know. When 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 that monster came out, you got out of the way. <laughs> but uh, he was also the like the the sweetest dude, you yeah. know. I saw him. I saw him maybe six months before he passed. Uh, maybe more like eight months to a year before he passed away. I ran into him at the Kaiser, at the Kaiser on uh, over here on Vermont and Sunset, and uh, 
hey, Supreme, what's going on, dude? And and I could tell, you know, that that uh, I could just look at him and and see that you know something was kind of draining out of him, but he still had that you know that love, man. He had that love, big yeah. big hug, you know, and. Uh, that was that was the last time I saw him, man. And uh, uh, you know, for somebody uh, like that, man, that you know, uh, an icon, man, an an icon. I mean, you know, there's there's so many, so many stars in this business, so many legends come and gone, but uh, what that guy gave, man. What he what he sacrificed, what he put his body and soul through, uh, is uh, some to be to be recognized. Not just now, but for 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 many 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 years yeah. to come. So, thank God, you know his his legacy will live on and uh, through YouTube and and. The, the XPW DVDs uh, and uh, man, you know, beautiful guy, man. Yeah. Much love, man. Supreme and and to his family. Mm -hmm. uh, gone too soon, man. Yeah. yeah. Great yeah. guy. Great yeah. dude. Really yeah. was good, good family man yeah. too. And yeah. And, um, there was there was one show that we did, and this guy in the parking lot just a random show and Supreme was on it. It was in Culver city. And this drunk fan was, was giving me crap. And, um, I mean, to the point where like, there was a little bit of physical stuff going on, but I remember Supreme was there and he said, Hey man, Klaus, I know, I know you're, you're not a wrestler. You're just an announcer, but you're our announcer. You're our announcer. And it was like, he never said anything like that to me before. And it was just like, it was like we were all one football team. Like everybody was a part of that team. You know, it's like if the Lakers back in the day were to travel, Chick Hearn is just as much part of the Lakers as the players. You know, they're, they're the same unit. And that's how he would make you feel sometimes. And when, when he would express it like that, you know, you knew you knew where his legions lied, man. And he didn't have to say that. He didn't have to do anything if he didn't want to. He, who's going to tell him what to do, right? Right. Um, so, you know, I appreciate that. And and he actually, in my eyes, right there, he saw the importance of every part of that team. You know, and and here he's the one almost dying in the ring, but he's given props to myself my role just as much as he would give props of maybe Patrick Hernandez too. Right. Right. Or Danny right. Ramirez. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I'm, I'm grateful that we are able to do this uh, with you and all these other guests that we have these opportunities to share uh, um, our stories and our memories about this legend. So, and he was XPW. I mean, that guy was XPW. Inarguably, yes. Yeah. If there's a poster, if there's a poster child or a poster boy or whatever you want to call it for the company, his his face would have to be the guy, right? You know, so no man. Um well shoot, Rivera. I mean, we could, you and I could keep talking forever, brother. And uh <laughs> and, I would, and I really I really wanna I'd love to have you. You're more than welcome to come back in the future. We'd love to part, have you part part on. two, Chico. That's right, because there's there is you and I, there, especially now, if I if I go over certain footage and all, there's so much that you and I could talk about because we were always there. We did everything together, right? You know, and all this. So we were we were there in those same moments and venues when all the stuff went down, whatever that may be. So so the uh, we're we're literally just scratching the surface, man. Um, I'm stuff we can talk about. But either way, man, it was it was. It was just a lot of fun, man. Just right when I picked up the, before we went on the air, I was like, man, it was just feel good <laughs> talking to you, bro. And, and, um, and we, we've been through, we, we, man, we've been through a lot together, man. And, and, uh, and sounds, man. yeah, pleasure knowing you and getting to meet you and, and then working together and, and, um, 
and uh, appreciating you even more now, man. Whenever I drive by a uh, industrial place and I see sheet metal, I get sheet metal. I, I always do that, man. Whenever I, <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, so, no, you're you uh, you're a legend, brother. And and thank you for being on here, dude. Thank you, man. Uh, uh, much love to you, Chris Kloss, and 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 not only to you, but to all the. XPW alumni, all the, the 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 guys that are still out there, and all the unfortunately, all the guys that have passed on, all the guys and gals that have passed on. Uh, but man, you know, once again, man, this is uh, this is a great business. A lot of people don't understand. You know, you know, my wife will be sitting next to me when I'm watching. Uh, 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 wrestling on the network and, and, you know, someone does a sunset flip and they got the pin and, and the guy's ass is right in the other guy's face. And she's looking at me going, what the hell is this shit? I said, this is beautiful, man. This is, this is great. You know, so, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's thank you, Chris, man. Yeah. Thank you. And all the, all the wrestling fans out there. Uh, thank you. Thank you, man. Much love, much respect. Right, right back at you. And thank you too, specifically to the fans that still talk about you and myself as as a commentary team. So that that also means a lot too. And there there are those that that have said very kind things about about our shtick together. So I, I appreciate that. I know thank you, you do too, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna wrap it up for this edition of Extreme Memories. My name is Chris Kloss. For Larry Rivera, we'll see you next time at the Wrestling Chatter Channel. Chico, you got to admit, this was an interesting one. Incredible, Chico. Until the next time, XPW. Off the air, Chico. Off the air. <laughs> Rivera, wait. Thank you for watching Extreme Memories hosted by Chris Kloss. He's dropping new episodes every month on the 15th and 30th. You can be the first to tune in by subscribing to the Wrestling Chatter channel right here on YouTube. See you next time.